And joining us now with more, Daniel Moody, co-host of the Democracy-ish podcast. And Brendan Buck served as press secretary for speakers Boehner and Ryan. He is also an MSNBC political analyst. So, Brendan, what do you expect out of this meeting today? What's the significance of it for whom? Yeah, I think there's a lot more to be gained here by Mike Johnson than Donald Trump. I'm actually surprised that Donald Trump um, is, is giving him this, this platform and this audience. Um, as you've discussed at length uh, over the last few weeks, Mike Johnson is in, in pretty big trouble in his conference, and standing next to Donald Trump is obviously helpful for him. I don't know that it's necessarily enough to save him, but it is certainly helpful. Um, I'm looking at it more curiously from the, the Trump perspective. What does he get out of this? We know that he's very transactional. Um, the bringing up a bill that doesn't really do a whole lot doesn't seem like it's um, uh, you know worth it to be. I'm, I, what I'm curious about is the interaction between the two of them on the bigger issues that are at play, namely aid to Ukraine. Is Donald Trump going to pressure Mike Johnson not to pass that aid for Ukraine that he has said he wants to do? So um, while they they said what this is about on its face, I'm very curious to see what other issues they tend to get into down here. Is there anything that the speaker could do to get out of what you describe as big trouble? Well, I don't know. Uh, you know that all comes down to the whims of uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and I would hate to try to get in, in her head. Um, I don't know that Donald Trump giving a bear hug to Mike Johnson is necessarily enough for Marjorie Taylor Greene to, to back away. What might get Marjorie Taylor Greene to back away is a recognition that she would lose on the floor. We haven't seen any other members really come out and, and back her up. And we've seen Democrats say that they will vote to save Mike Johnson. So I don't know that Marjorie Taylor Greene wants to get herself in a situation where 430 members of the House are voting against her um, in, a, in a very lonely bid. Um, but again, she's uh, a, a live wire. I, I don't know that we can we can predict that. But Mike Johnson's going to have to tread very carefully, particularly as it as it relates to Ukraine. Aid. And meanwhile, Danielle, Vice President Harris is headed to Battleground, Arizona, to try to pin this new abortion ban on Donald Trump, the new abortion ban from the 1850s, even as he attempts to distance himself from it. How effective could this message be? I think that it's going to be very effective, just as effective as their recent ad that they put out that said Trump did this, right? Uh, Donald Trump did do this. Donald Trump owns the fact that we no longer have abortion in this country. He elected, uh, appointed three members of the Supreme Court who he knew were going to overturn precedent. And he has said, and on every single campaign trail, that he is proud of that record. So the vice president going down to Arizona and pinning this on Donald Trump Trump on the Republicans and saying that we have a patchwork of protections right now for women in this country because of the Republican Party and Donald Trump, and that they won't stop if he gets into the White House, that there will be a national ban. This is going to be a message that resonates. Yeah, and it resonates, Danielle, no doubt, throughout the remainder of this season going into November. Absolutely, because this is going to be the thing that I believe that will bring people to the polls. Look, there are a lot of things that this administration is doing. You just talked about more student loan uh, debt relief, which is absolutely necessary and critical. But bodily autonomy is up there in the things that this that people in this country will lose if Republicans gain the White House. Donald Trump has said it, and what he's doing right now, this kind of back and forth, oh, he doesn't want an abortion ban. We know that you can't trust this man because he lies as often as he breathes. Brendan, could who wins Arizona all come down to the issue of abortion? Uh, it sure could, if, it, if it's on the ballot there. And we've seen that this is a, a real motivator. I, I, I don't dispute at all that um, uh, the abortion issue is going to turn out Democrats in a way that is essential for Biden. We know that he has been struggling with uh, a lack of enthusiasm among really core constituencies for his party. And this may be a situation where uh, he's able to uh, outperform based on an issue that's largely unrelated to him. Um, you know, I, I will say, though, I don't know that this is um, sufficient on its own. Uh, the Biden administration, um, or excuse me, the Biden campaign is still going to have to figure out an economic message. You know, the, the issue with Dobbs has been going on for, for months and months now, and there's still plenty of polls that show Donald Trump winning. So it's important that they turn out their, uh, you know, their, their core supporters, and, and if they can use this issue, great. Um, but there are other issues that they're going to have to figure out, uh, namely in inflation and, and the economy, where uh, Donald Trump still continues to have a large lead, not to mention issues like immigration. 
Danielle Moody and Brendan Buck, thank you both very much. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on Get or the Cloud icon and enjoy it.